ladies and gentlemen. Now, uh, concerning the uh, poll taken by Newsweek magazine, I think you said that this was the leaders who said that, uh, who went with King and against Mr. Muhammad around 90%. I just told you a little while ago, these leaders that they call leaders, this included <laughs> Lena Horne, this included Dick Gregory, and this included comedians, comics, trumpet players, baseball players. Show me in the white community where a comedian is a white leader. Show me in the white community where a singer is a white leader, or a dancer or a trumpet player is a white leader. These aren't leaders. These are puppets and clowns that uh, have been set up over the white community and or over the black community by the white community and have been made celebrities and usually say exactly what uh, they know that the white man wants to hear. And it is an... Thank you, Malcolm. Malcolm, thank you, thank you, thank you. You could not have said it better than I would have said it if I were you. Malcolm X, everybody. The late Malcolm X. Gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents. The reason why I played that is because I've never heard that before. That's right. You would think I would have heard it by now. Maybe I have heard it, but never paid attention to what he was saying. But I thought about it. I mean, look, here we go. He tells you about the puppets. We got Will Smith slapping the little black boy. Okay, now, now, hold on. March 4th will be a full year, and we're still talking about it. Well, you're talking about it. Nobody else is. No, they're talking about it still. I, I just watched Jim Carrey. They, they playing his thing over and over again where he talks about how he was appalled. If only you guys could see the arena. So when you're looking at television, look for the strings. Okay, there are strings. Look for the strings. You will see them. They are visible. Okay, because there's a bunch of puppets out there, and there's a puppeteer. So watch the string. Um, let me do this for you. What I'm about to share for you guys for a couple of short minutes, because I just took a short break. Um, we'll be talking with the gang tonight. Uh, we have our meeting tonight. And so prior to the meeting, I decided I would do this video, and I definitely wanted to play Malcolm X um, as an intro. And I think that he said more than enough. I wish other people were bringing up these points that I am pointing out to you guys. I wish that you can see how there is no turning back. There is no going back. They cannot undo this. I'm going to show you about four paragraphs. We're going to go up to this section right. Oh, there's two does. I got to get rid of that. Duh. I ha Well, we haven't done this one yet. It, I stopped at number six. So we're going to be right here. Stopped at number six, so we can do a little bit of editing, too, at the same time. I want you all to pay attention to what's being said. The very fact that the promissory note contains the borrower's signature and an order to pay or pay to the order of without recourse endorsement no longer qualifies as a promissory note. Did you hear that? As long as the borrower's signature is on that instrument and it was delivered in connection with the payment for the advancement of Federal Reserve notes, it no longer qualifies as a promissory note. So it says the fact that this is the case has been widely ignored by the United States without jurisdiction and without following the dictates of law and is contrary to the operation of law, both commercial and contractual. Now, this is not no AI saying this. Y'all know that's me. Under the Federal Reserve Act, Section 16, paragraphs 1 and 2, when the borrower tenders the collateral security for the loan, i.e., the note, the draft, the bill of exchange, the banker's acceptance, it, is, it constitutes as payment in full, if not timely dishonored by the bank, i.e., the local Federal Reserve agent. The customary process provides that Federal Reserve agents shall extend credits on behalf of the borrower to the seller of the property being purchased. The borrower, after tendering the collateral security for this lending of credit, Truth and Lending Act statement, documents that the financial institution lends credit in this customer financial transaction, a consumer finance transaction. So I got to get rid of financial. But it is a consumer finance transaction. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. That's what qualifies the UCC. You have to document 
that it is a consumer finance transaction. Why? Because it is not a secured loan. The note was a security for the loan, and once that is tendered, there is no longer any more a security for the loan. The conversion takes care of that. Cha-ching! Okay, shall we go on? And such is not a mortgage loan with respect to it being inapplicable to the Uniform Commercial Code commercial transaction application. And the Federal Reserve, now the reason why that's important is because the courts say to people all the time that they cannot include this, they cannot include that, because it was a consumer finance, it wasn't a consumer finance transaction. It was blah, 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 a secured loan, and secured loans are not covered under the UCC. Secured loans are not covered under the UCC. Say what? Secured loans are not covered under the UCC. That's what the courts will tell you, and that's what it will tell you. But consumer finance transactions are. And the Federal Reserve agent is to deposit the collateral security, the note, with the Federal Reserve District branches in exchange to replace the credits extended to the financial institution. The Federal Reserve notes thus completing the transaction. Yeah, because they extended their credit to the seller of the property. The borrowers receive the home, but until the bank gets paid, they make the borrower put the home up as collateral, even though they've already received the collateral. Once they receive the money from the Federal Reserve, then that's it. There is no debt, people. They do receive the Federal Reserve notes from the Federal Reserve. All you got to do is subpoena that re those records. Su 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 subpoena those. Su 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 subpoena those records. <sighs> there is no loss to either party. The borrower tenders the collateral security which in no event shall be less than the amount of Federal Reserve notes applied for. The seller of the property receives the credit from the banks that operate as circulating notes, so to speak, between membered banks and in substance only. And the financial institution receives that which was utilized to invest and or uh, which is utilized, which can be. So it says, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do is. We'll make it definite utilized to invest and or to lend to investors, thus there is no deprivation and or suffrage sustained. The borrower is asking for a stay. In other words, the borrower is asking for a stay, that they're asking for a stay. Hold on. We're going to do that. And that the borrowers are asking for a stay. Such cannot be, and that will be the next statement, cannot be said to be disadvantageous to any party, as there is no documented loss. Note the following. Under the Federal Reserve Circular Number 10, Appendix Number 3, the borrower gives the irrevocable power of attorney to the local Federal Reserve agent to carry out the aforementioned process. Thus, the borrower by giving power of attorney to the local Federal Reserve agent, places the obligation to the, on the local Federal Reserve agent. And the clause of the contract, which says that the Federal Reserve local agent is absolved from any obligation, no liabilities, and we're going to put obligational because it just sounds better. It, so, it seems to flow better. As it's supposed to be as an invalid clause. So operates as an invalid clause. We put our comma here. Once the Federal Reserve agent accuses the borrower of failing their obligation or duty to perform, when such a duty has been irrevocably prescribed, that agent and or that agent's successor and or that agent's assigns as stipulated in the agreement between the parties. Basically, ladies and gentlemen, what this is saying, if the borrower gives limited, excuse me, not limited, gives general irrevocable power of attorney, to the local Federal Reserve agent because of the contract they sign at closing. And the local Federal Reserve agent in the contract says that they are not responsible if they fail to do anything. And the borrower is now blamed because he gave the authority of the local Federal Reserve agent to carry out these tasks and the local Federal Reserve agent failed to carry out the task and now the borrower is being held responsible. That makes the clause against them being uh, without any liability being unconstitutional and it's an invalid contract. Why? because it's an impossibility. They cannot fail to do their job and then blame the borrower for their failure. That's not in the agreement. And it's an impossibility because contracts must be fair. And as you can tell just by understanding what's being said, that's not fair. Okay.
Now, the converted into a financial instrument, otherwise known as a promissory note in our bill of exchange, to a negotiable instrument is what gives it the capacity of a bearer instrument. And since the Federal Reserve Act, subsection 16, paragraph number 2, specifically holds that a promissory note tendered in exchange for the advancement of Federal Reserve note operates as collateral and security for said advancements, i.e., that is, a negotiable instrument by operation of statute, the borrower fulfills the obligation under the terms of the agreement by tendering such a payment. Sorry, I got UPS outside to the local Federal Reserve agent. And why are you, hold on, there's something wrong here. All right, see it had the red line underneath, so that's why I was like, what, 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 what you doing? Ah, and that when the local Federal Reserve agent receives this tender of payment in the form of collateral security and does not timely refuse such a tender, it constitutes payment, or as defined in commercial law, according to satisfaction. So, the reason why I'm showing this to you is because each one of our people who are mortgagers are going to receive the ability of providing such a document to the court. That's what we're working on. This is what we've been working on since we pointed out to everybody what any Federal Reserve agent equates to. And the thing about it is I told people my name will be on the complaint because if you look at our website, they assign certain interests, equitable interests in the property to the trust of which I'm the trustee. And because they assign their equitable interests in the trust, I mean, to the trust, the trustee can come in and now speak because the trustee is a property owner with them. They own the equitable interest, which allows the trustee to be a part of the case. In other words, my job is to step in and start speaking, since many of the people whom we speak for won't be able to step in and speak. And since I'm stepping in and speaking, that's going to take a lot of my time. That means I need you guys to stop emailing me about junk that don't amount to anything. I got people... You all know that when it comes to my health, you are not supposed to sit up there and send me any information. I've already told y'all I don't want to hear it. I know every time I mention about muscular dystrophy, I tell y'all I don't want to hear it. I mention about myasthenia gravis, I say I don't want to hear it. I say fibromyalgia, I don't want to hear it. I even tell you about the osteoarthritis. I don't want to hear it. And I can't begin to tell you how much pain my shoulder is in. Okay, I'm literally losing the ability to use my right arm. That's right, but that ain't your business. If I mention it, that's my business. Leave my business to me. So if you make a comment like the young lady who did yesterday, don't care if she ain't watched all the other videos. I don't care if she just did it out of her kindness concern. I don't give up. I'm sorry, Tupac. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I already said enough. I don't want your opinion. I don't want your suggestions. I didn't ask for it. I'm not asking for it now. I got too much going on. Got too much to worry about. Got too much to do. People said they could hear the stress in my voice when they listen to the videos. Y'all don't even know the half of it. Okay, do me a favor. Go back and watch the last two years. Remember, since I was set at liberty, this has been nonstop. No, no, go ahead. Go back. Go back and watch. This has been nonstop without missing a beat and go back and look and see if anybody else has done the same thing who's been through what i've been through and each time i just keep coming back stronger and stronger and stronger because i keep telling you keep with me and i'm gonna keep revealing your secrets why because the god that i serve is almighty and i go to him and i say hey jehovah and jehovah says what up son i said Will you please help me to understand the secrets of this stupid system to help these people before it's too late? And he says, show enough, Shogun. And he gives me the information. So let me point it out to you so you get it. I'm going to read just this section right here so that you understand the whole point. The petitioners respectfully request that this court enforce the provisions of the Federal Reserve Act as written, and specifically Section 401, Paragraph 18, 
or excuse me, subsection 18, paragraph 6, and section 403 in conjunction with section 401, which provides for the dispositing of promissory notes with the Federal Reserve Bank in exchange for Federal Reserve notes. Okay, we're asking the court to enforce that section. Why? Because it's not being enforced today, and it hasn't been removed. They've not taken that away from the Federal Reserve Act. This is still the so-called law. The petitioners respectfully request the court to place these facts on judicial notice as the court has judicial knowledge of these facts as the court is deemed and perceived to know the law. So, okay, proceed. Oh, come on. I before E except after uh, C. I had it right. Anyway, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, the court is also to take notice of the fact that we have utilized the acts of Congress, statutes at large, congressional record, presidential proclamation 2039, banking holiday, and administrative order, and the Federal Reserve Operating Circular. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the law. Federal Reserve Act, statute at large. That, that's what they say. It's prima facie evidence of law. Hold on now. The congressional record is intent. So it now stands as irrefutable evidence. And the presidential proclamation, man, that's an order. Okay, plus the federal circular, these are all administrative orders. Because the Federal Reserve Act tells the Federal Reserve what to do. It's an administrative order. It's a procedural order. It's a regulation. As a preponderance of evidence as to what the law is, which may not be overcome by mere arguments, as the law dictates and the administrative order that also serves as a proclamation declaration as specified by the president that is still extant to the very day of this presentment being presented to this court. No such note shall be issued under this paragraph after the president has declared the proclamation by proclamation that the emergency recognized by the president by proclamation of March 6, 1933 has terminated unless such circulating notes are secured by the positive bonds of the United States bearing the circulating privilege. I'm going to get rid, rid of that unless such notes. Okay? Because we don't need that part. We just want to say that the president ain't never terminated that bull. You know what I'm saying? So, then we got to talk about this. The United States Senate, through its investigation of 1973 and its Senate report on national emergencies, number 93-549, has affirmatively documented that the act of the president has not been repealed and or terminated. There is no evidence on any record as to the amending of the aforementioned information, which, with the exception of the replacement of circulating notes with national bank notes and subsequently with Federal Reserve notes via the act of June 12, 1945, subsection number 3, leaving the other provisions of the act intact. This is what we're bringing forth before the courts. So this is what I'm taking the time to let you guys know what we're getting ready to do. I'm looking at the clock. I got three minutes before our meeting, so I got to let y'all go. Hey, I hope this information is beneficial. I hope you gathered something out of it. And stop looking up to actors and celebrities as being y'all leader. Because there's only one group of people who allows actors and celebrities to be their leaders, and that's them folks that are black folks. Don't, I, I don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. They make our leaders comedians, actors, singers, and dancers. Shame on us for allowing. Gotta go. Y'all have a good day.